call the August 16th, 2022 school building committee meeting to order. Our uh, first order of business is to acknowledge public participation in this era of Zoom. So let me read the statement if I could. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the state of emergency, Governor Baker signed an executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. On July 16th, Governor Baker extended the expiration date of this order until March 31st, 2023. These orders allow public bodies to continue holding meetings remotely. Citizens with a question or comment can email mmortali at walpole.k12.na.us or middle school project at walpole.k12.na.us. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes from uh, August 9th. Do we have any questions or comments about the minutes? Hearing none, I take a motion to approve the meeting minutes from August 9th. So moved. I right, have a motion from Ms. Gallivan. I'll take that as a second for Mr. Barrett. Let me uh, poll the committee. Mr. Frischo. Yes. Uh, Mr. Barrett. Yes. Ms. Hamilton. Abstain. Uh, Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Fisher, Mr. Jeffrey Fisher. Jeff Fisher? Yes. All right, Mr. Jack Fisher? Yes. Yes. Mr. Hahn, and I vote yes. Did I miss anybody? All right, it is a vote. Mark, Our next William. I'm sorry? Jeff? We lost you, Jeff. I'm sorry. Um, I did have your vote, Jeff, I believe. Our next order of business is a project update from Compass. Um, yes, so project update that uh, this is the update that's scheduled. There are some minor changes. Uh, we'll, we'll go over the um, um, the meetings for the rest of the year uh, in in a couple more slides. Um, we'll uh, well the next slide. So in September, that uh, it will be on September twentieth, and this is uh, uh, we will be reviewing and pre re and re approving the pre qualification list of subcontractors. If we can do it for everybody, that would be great. But we might have to do it in two batches so that. Uh, September 20th will be for the, we definitely have to do it for the ERP number three, early release package number three, and then also approve the uh, invoice for the, the month of August. In October, it will be on the 18th. Uh, it will be similar uh, the uh, similar to the September uh, meeting. On November 1, we do anticipate to have the result of the file sub bid uh, that's what FSB stands for, uh, for the ERP uh, early release package number three ready. And then uh, we will be seeking for the, uh, if everything is ready, that we will be seeking submission for the 90% uh, package. And we will also review the bu uh, budget at the time. Um, and on November 15th, that we uh, the, it will be for review and the proof of the cost of the ERP number three and vendor invoice and December 13th will be for the bid set uh, and as well as the uh, uh, vendor invoice. And then the, uh, for project update on the status of the summer work uh, that what you're looking at here is the completion of the paving of the, um, the uh, temporary bus lane. Uh, we have gone over that with uh, Ed and uh, Patrick and company was the school bus to work out the details uh, this week. And so that this is uh, in fact that this picture is uh, from last week. So uh, more work has been done. And then that uh, this is the temporary parking lot that is uh, completed. And this is looking from the uh, trailer, looking back to the existing school. And the uh, flagpole has been relocated, uh, right? as you can see in the middle of the picture right here. And then the, uh, and 
the uh, the all the trees down this end of the roadway has been uh, trimmed and ready so that the uh, that it will be ready for the bus to enter and uh, go through the site. Um, any um, questions from the committee on the project status in terms of where the summer work is at or uh, uh, or the meetings? Anybody? Okay. Need I I get a real quick question, Chen. Yeah. 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 Um, so it sounds like everything's going according to plan. You know, no surprises. Um, everything looks good, at least in the pictures. And I drove by there the other day. Um, anything, you know, unexpected or any shifts that have had to take uh, place in the sequence or anything like that? Uh, Joe and Griffin, you can correct me, but I don't think that there's any surprises so far. Had, uh, I mean, there's uh, the the normal coordination was the uh, DPWs and and the uh, and so on and then so. But other than that, I don't. There's nothing really uh, out of the ordinary that I can uh, I can say for the summer work. Uh, we're still at the mercy of the utility company for the transfer of, of um, uh, the to the uh, temporary uh, relocation of the power line, but that was expected. Um, and uh, that we we will get it done as quickly as possible. Yeah, I, I would go as the, so far as to say things have kind of gone off without a hitch so far this summer, and we haven't run into anything that we didn't expect in terms of costs or anything like that. It's it's been it's been uh, pretty smooth. Yeah, I'll second okay. I'll second that. Um, we had a good walk with Ed uh, yesterday as a project team. We actually did a, a, a test run with one of the buses as far as using the. Uh, bus exit lane, laying out the pedestrian way down there, the fencing, uh, the exit of that has been coordinated with town engineering, uh, so we can maintain that crosswalk on East Street. Um, I think we're getting that rest of the pavement done this week, and we'll get the fencing uh, completed up up to Washington Street and the parking. And uh, we have a whole package of temporary signage that'll be going in over the next uh, week or so. Um, and we've coordinated all the school dates as far as uh, new teachers, when teachers are arriving, the sneak peek day for fifth graders. So I think the, the project's ready uh, for all of those events. Yep. Cool. Thanks, guys. All right. So can if I, there's no... Uh, go ahead. Uh, can I just ask, who's responsible for communicating this information especially to the families and the students that go to bird middle school but for the the community in general are you updating the website or how how are people supposed to stay on top of the changes um the we do a weekly update uh uh kate sends out a weekly update email to the neighbors and then in addition to that uh and then that very same uh, three week look ahead is also posted on the website uh, and we are also in constant co communication with Ed in terms of uh, getting information out and we are planning uh, the next step with Ed is, is uh, to um, get the uh, temporary uh, roadway condition that uh, for the school opening day to be um, we're working on getting a, a one pager so that uh, it can be mailed out to the com to the uh, parents. So those are the uh, uh, channels of communication that we are uh, doing regularly. Great, thank you. If there's not no other question, the, uh, this, this will be the, uh, the end of the uh, project status update. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if I uh, may, that uh, the the next item is the to go over the cost of the early release package number two, and I believe Joe will be doing this uh, present this part. Thanks, Jen. One, thanks, Jen. My mic was off. I'm sorry. Um, Joel, you want to take over? Yeah. All right. So uh, Chin has up here. This is uh, kind of a summary of where we see uh, the cost landing for this early release package too. Uh, so basically uh, on July 1st, TAP-A produced their 60% construction documents. And uh, with that document set, the site scope of work, so the site contractor, 
Um, that's all the excavation, all the utilities on the site, um, the you know, drainage structures, all that kind of all that kind of work. Uh, it does not include the landscaping or the site concrete, sidewalks, things like that. So th there are still some site elements that aren't uh, part of this package. Those come later. Um, so this uh, scope of work is on that 60% set pretty well fully developed. Um, so we, with that set, we put that out to bid. Um, we got back uh, a couple of weeks ago now, um, three bids on the site work, all very competitive, all very good site contractors too. Uh, one of the bidders is Robert Auer, who's out there for us right now and uh, has done a very good job with this summer work package. Um, and then uh, there, there are two other bidders, Ernest Quigley and Sons and Manafort Precision, um, all very good uh, uh, contract site contractors. Um, and uh, so we've been working with them on, on those bids, leveling them out, making sure they have everything that we need them to have. Um, and the number you see here presented is actually the number that we have in our 60% estimate that, that uh, we received uh, last I believe last building committee we went through that 60% um, estimate. But so these are the numbers that are baked in there right now. Uh, right now on Monday of this week, yesterday, um, we received uh, it's the ERP2 document set from TAPE. So that's the official contract documents that these site contractors will be held to. Uh, there are some changes in that set from the set that they bid off of. So basically what we've done is we give them a week to sit with those new documents, let us know if there's anything that they feel affects their pricing or anything that they want to bring to our attention. And then we'll have formal sit downs. We're gonna bring in all three of these, these bidders next week on Monday and Tuesday to meet with Compass, meet with TAPE and their uh, engineers and kind of go through piece by piece through the scope and make sure we've got everything uh, covered where we need it. So um, the number we're showing right now is, is uh, what we think is a comfortable number uh, that we'll be able to buy out that site package with, uh, with one of those contractors. Um, so it could it could fluctuate some in between now and uh, kind of next week where we actually have somebody nailed down and, and ready to recommend an award. Um, but that's we're presenting that we think that that's a, a comfortable number uh, to represent right there for that site work package. Uh, also on the sixty percent package and part of this ERP two is we have the metal decking package. And this is something that has kind of come out of COVID, uh, you know, and, and it's, a, it's a workaround that we used to not have to do, but um, with metal decking, uh, the, the supply chain is, is just so far out on metal decking that we, we, we're looking to get a spot in line with a metal decking supplier. So we've gone out directly to all the metal decking suppliers. And uh, what we have shown here is uh, a number uh, we, we've got three bids in from, it's basically there, there are three decking suppliers that supply all the steel decking in the country. Um, so what we have here is uh, the number that we would, uh, that, that we think we will uh, be able to get somebody in at or, uh, or within that range. Um, basically what we're doing is we're buying a spot in line for that decking package. And then eventually uh, in ERP3, we'll have uh, we'll bid out the installation package and, and those guys will use this supplier. Uh, so it's been competitively bid. It's a, it's a good workaround to, to get competitive pricing and get a spot in line early. So we feel good about that number. And then um, the sections below that, there's ERP2 scope holds and ERP2 allowances. So these are items that we've identified as being potential cost items that we know we're going to need to spend money on, um, but that we feel it's better controlled on our end with Compass and Tape uh, to, to kind of manage these rather than trying to, to buy them out. So for example, uh, one of the things on here is um, uh, the asphalt escalation. So uh, Mass DOT does a good job of defining liquid asphalt costs. And uh, we've found that we have a lot more success putting that in kind of an allowance that when the price of oil goes up, uh, we can, we can, uh, you know, have a have a pot of uh, funds available to to pay that directly, rather than asking all those site contractors to think about where the cost of oil is going to be when they pave the site in two years and speculate. And and so that this is a 
you know, there, there are some elements here that we've uh, identified that we think are, are good things to put money towards that we want to hold on to money towards. Any expenditure out of those scope holds or allowances specifically gets presented to the whole team as, um, as an item to approve. Uh, so any, anything we spend out of there goes through an approval process after. Um, and then anything that we don't spend out of there goes back to the project budget. So it's uh, it's kind of a, a good tool for us to use to identify and track uh, some cost items uh, and manage them through the project. Um, beyond that, we have just the the general conditions and requirements, same as from the price proposals, same same stuff that we had uh, from uh, ERP one and Amendment one, and um, and, we, and uh, I'll. Joe, I uh, just let me say that the uh, let me just make sure that uh, the committee uh, understands that um, these uh, general condition, the management fee, this is based on the contract that we have signed with uh, Fontaine Brother. So these are formulas that are going to just simply uh, that's already uh, agreed to. So that uh, uh, based on whatever the sum from the above, and then that's a formula in terms of percentage and or month. Uh, that the the rest of this is generated, right? Uh, so that that all ties out to uh, we, we're showing right now eleven point three million dollars for this ERP two uh, and amendment two. So that's where we see the cost uh, more or less. So like I said, next week we'll have those interviews with the the site bidders, and we'll we'll actually make a recommendation to award to one of them. We'll make a recommendation to award to one of the metal decking suppliers as well. And uh, we'll be able to finalize that number, but uh, we're, we're confident in the number that's there right now. So you have a sense of where this amendment two is going to end up. And so we are asking the committee to authorize that uh, this uh, dollar amount, and then the um, uh, up. So the ERP num uh, early release package number two amendment with Fontaine Brother would 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 be a maximum of eleven million three hundred and seventy nine thousand dollar. 542, and that would allow uh, Fontaine Brother to go out and um, sign uh, on a uh, site contractor as well as the ordering the metal decking, and that would allow the uh, site work to uh, basically start somewhere around uh, just right after uh, the Labor Day. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Joel. Does anybody have any questions for Joel? Can I see you have a hand up? Uh, yeah, uh, quick question. Uh, under the summary of the CM contingency, 1.5% from price proposal, is that something that's going to be baked into these all as well? Yeah, so that's that just an yeah, add on. That contingency is is part of our, our price proposal. It's a standard thing. Basically, it's, it's money that uh, we use to address any issues that come up over the course of construction. If that stuff doesn't get used, that stuff goes back to the town. So it's uh, yeah. it's, it's just a yeah. construction and contingency. For clarification, that basically the 400,000, 325, and then 170, mm -hmm. these three line items, uh, before any of them can be spent, that uh, Fontaine Brother would need to uh, bring it to with, uh, uh, review it with uh, Compass and Tape. And then after that, only that uh, we uh, you, they would need authorization before they can spend any of the line items uh, for those three line items. Yep, yep. You read my mind, Chen. That's that's where I was going with that. So um, it seems like you guys have a, a pretty good grip on what's going on. And if you have the final drawings, hopefully some of those scope holes um, will be clarified. But uh, I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And any the sorry, oh, I'm Chen. sorry. The the drawing is the one, uh, the ERP two drawing set that uh, Tape issue recent just yesterday will be the uh, contract document which Compass and uh, Fontaine will enforce uh, with the subcontractors, and so that uh, that that sort of allow the contract to be complete. Thanks, Jen. Any other questions? Hearing none, I guess we need a motion to approve the early release package. The total value of the amendment is $11,379,542. Do we have a motion? I'll make that motion, Mark. All right, motion from Jack Fisher. Do we have a second? Second. Second from Ms. Uh, Gallivan. Let me poll the committee. Mr. Frischa. Yes. Mr. Barrett. 
Yes. Ms. Hamilton. Yes. Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Mr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Jeff Fisher. Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher. Yes. And I vote yes, it is a vote. All right, so our next order of business is a review and a vote eventually on the vendor invoice package from July. And this is again, Eugene, thank you. Yeah, so in the in month of July, we have um, uh, four major items of expenditure. One is the Eversource that uh, was approved uh, in the previous meeting. That payment was made uh, for the uh, so to for the to Eversource for the utility connection, um, and then we have Compass um, uh, invoice uh, totaling forty six thousand two hundred and seventy five dollars and thirty five cents, and then Tape invoice totaling uh, uh, just a, a slightly over three hundred thousand um, dollars. And Fountain Brothers uh, pre construction service plus the ERP number one. Uh, the uh, for the construct uh, for the uh, enabling package totaling three hundred and twelve thousand one one hundred and sixty seven dollars sixty three cents. Um, these have uh, the details are in the VIP package that was sent over as part of the package, and the invoices are here. And this is the um, uh, approved. Uh, this is the uh, the application for payment that has been reviewed and uh, approved by the by Tape architect uh, and um, and for uh, for payment. So we we need a vote from the committee on the for this amount and then uh, the uh, just so, so for the detail that uh, this is also in your package in terms of the where the uh, uh, 312,000 goes for the uh, Fontaine brothers. Uh, payment and this is a summary of the uh, budget status um, that is uh, right now that we're uh, on budget and the MSBA uh, reimbursement right now that we have submitted uh, 3.7 million dollars and then have received the town has received 1.7 million dollars back from MSBA already and uh, Mr. Chairman, we will need a vote to uh, approve the invoice for this uh, the month of July. Thank you, Chen. Do we have any questions or comments about the vendor invoice package? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the vendor invoice package. Do we have so a motion? We, motion so for Ms. Gallivan. Do we have a second? Second. Ben. Second from Ben. No, Mr. Barrett, thank you. Let's call the committee. Mr. Frischo. Yes. Barrett. Yes. Ms. Hamilton. Yes. Ms. Gallivan. Yes. Mr. Anderson. Yes. Dr. Hahn. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jeff Fisher. Yes. Mr. Jack Fisher. Yes. And I vote yes. It is a vote. So our next order of business is a design update from Compass. Uh, that would be from Tape, and I'm going to stop sharing and let, uh, I think Wendy will be able to share. Am I, Wendy, are you? Yes. Well, she's, <clears throat> while she's pulling that up, I just wanted to um, preface the presentation with the, the, when we do these interior finishes and materials, we're not looking for final, final, final sign off on um, really anything. Um, this is this is sort of the, this is probably the last time you'll see a finishes presentation until we get into construction doc and sorry until we get into construction um and fontaine submits what is received and so basically what we're doing with this presentation is um and the materials that you've seen had the opportunity to go see at town hall is setting the basis of design for the project but not necessarily the exact you know, exact finish, exact color, things like that. That all gets submitted in the process down the road. Um, you know, probably more than a year from now. And um, Fontaine, we'll ask Fontaine to get all of that stuff together, submitted, so that we can do another presentation with all the finishes together, and get final color buy-ins with you know paint and things like that um, throughout the building. And so, 
really all we're doing here is making sure there's no egregious objections to anything here on in terms of basis of design. Um, and hopefully we can uh, get through that and then um, finish the documents and do the presentation, final, final presentation, um, like I said, later down the road. So um, with that, I'll let Wendy uh, carry through. You want to talk about the exteriors, Chris? Yeah, I can do that. Um, so the exteriors have been uh, going through a bit of value engineering, but you uh, have been tracking that with the value engineering logs and conversations that have happened relative to uh, being on budget. Um, and so there are a couple of uh, colors of split face CMU that you can see on the, the side here. Um, what the lighter color being um, more kind of towards the left of the building um, where the the larger spaces are and then the gray color is the accent piece on the bump outs for the classrooms. Um, and so that process is just unfolding and then here's a rendering that you can see that at the community entry in the Walpole Middle School. Um, no real significant, I would say no major um, changes through the process. We've been able to hold on to most, most of what we intended to do. Um, but you've seen those uh, discussions through the VE process. So these renderings are just kind of highlighting what the intent is for building materials on the outside. And Chris, Chris. Um, may I interrupt? Uh, sorry to interrupt on this. So that uh, I just want to point out to the committee that the ah. rendering reflected the value engineer, uh, in, in the, the decisions that has been made today in terms of the modification to the exterior windows and uh, exterior, uh, the canopy uh, re, uh, modification at the community entrance, et cetera. But we still have the large amount of uh, glass at the uh, monumental stair, as you can see in the middle of the picture. Chris, can I ask a question as well? Yeah. So if you look at the rendering here, the first floor is in one color and the second two floors are in a different color. And then we have that bump out of the windows in gray, but I don't, I don't know if we have in the margins here, what the CMU looks like on the first floor. Do you know what I mean? That's that's on the next page. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, or maybe not the next page. It's the, <laughs> the that one. There we go. It's the utility brick on the bottom there. Um, that's that's the that's the darker gray um, Bowerston on the bottom there, and then gotcha. the upper version is the blend. So that's that's the two different versions of uh, utility that's in the project right now. Um, and then go back one, Wendy. Um, so this this image here, um, the Chin, I think the the middle portion is reflective of what we were able to keep based on the value engineering efforts, um, where the monumental stair is. Um, yes. was, we were able to get other reductions elsewhere. So that middle section there where Wendy's mouse is um, is actually what we hope will stay but you know we still have to get through another round of estimating so fingers crossed on that um but again the metal panels and and like windows all the kind of metal products on the building we want to be a cl classic bar bronze color that darker bronze um and then up on the left side of the gym just underneath that tree in the top left there um is a polycarbonate which is just a you know frosted material um that behaves more like a wall than a window so energy efficiency that's kind of a better product and diffuse light in the gym um so wendy you can go to the this one we can stop here for a second this is that zoomed out bird's eye view from the southwest side of the site and um and again just looking at the overall massing and you can see uh the the bump outs in the classrooms on the south side here kind of come a little bit more easy to see but those are that gray um the, the gray uh cmu versus the utility bricks that you see um, for the lower and upper portions that we just described um when you go to the next slide and then this is the view up um as you're coming down from washington street um and the new the new entry drive and so um this is the classroom wing there that you see first, and then you kind of go around the building to the entry. Um, but again, same palette of materials here. You can kind of see the difference between 
in the back far right of the building, that's that lighter color C or the uh, more buff colored CMU than the blend brick on the classroom wing proper. And then the gray CMU where um, the building bumps out and has a couple of uh, features there. Um, so again, the building is, um, is sort of the same as you've seen in the past. When you can go next slide. And I believe all these materials, these boards right here, um, we're at, they are at town hall. So hopefully you've all had a chance to go down and look at them and um, do the old scratch and sniff and touch and feel trick and see if you have any major objections. But um, that's, those are uh, representative of what we would like to aim for on the project. And again, there will be the basis of design, but will be open, um, open bid. Um, so there will be at least three manufacturers of this stuff um, specified. And so the, the exact tones of some of these colors may be a little bit different depending on who we get. I'd say most of the time we get our basis of design, but um, there's quite, um, quite a number of times that we also get uh, different products um, submitted, but that's okay. We uh, tend to get it pretty close. So um, we can go to the next slide. I guess these are interiors. So the the approach to the interiors um, has remained to be, uh, a mixture of warm and cool neutrals with color accents in key areas. Um, we always want to keep a semi-natural palette, um, which also keeps it timeless throughout the years, which is something that we really strive for. So we're looking at um, the quartz tile in three different neutrals. And then as mentioned, we have the three accent colors um, that will be applied to each of the three floors. In the area of the monumental stair, the central lobby, we're still really trying to um, draw attention to that stair because we know that you can see it from the exterior and it's really a focal point in that space. So using the neutral tile on the floor, on the first floor, but then the actual area um, where the stair comes down, where you have the opening right here. Once you look down into that area, you'll see the up color accent as well. So it's almost like the stair is continuing and, you know, um, pulling the color into that area. This is a concept that we've looked at before. Um, and then we have wall tile. Where we have wall tile would be a, a relatively light neutral 12 by 24 inch um, porcelain tile. In this particular stair, we do have um, some wood under the stair too. So just trying to bring a little bit of a natural um, element into the space. And then wood also, also comes through the project in the doors and all of the cabinets throughout the, throughout the building. Um, so we do still have those light maple wood accents throughout in various uh, locations. In the auditorium, we're looking at um, bringing in some blue into the space, um, but as mentioned, color is not something that is, is necessarily being finalized right now, but we are looking at putting carpet tile throughout the space. The stairs themselves will actually have a broad loom that matches. Um, we typically, in our auditoriums, we think of them as more of, a, of a performance spaces, theatrical spaces. We like to use very, very dark tones in there so that we're not detracting from what's happening on the stage. Um, that being said, we do, uh, we are showing some light maple accents in the space as well. So we'll have that nice contrast of something really dark and then um, the light wood as well. Uh, um, it, particularly in the acoustic elements. I forgot, but Joanne's getting together with the East Glen. What was that? Did I miss that? I think it was an errant unmute. Okay. okay. Um, in the cafeteria, the cafeteria is the quartz flooring, uh, which we see throughout most of the the building for the resilient flooring. We'll see that in the classroom wings as well. Um, in the cafeteria, we do have 12 by 24 inch porcelain tile on the walls for durability. Uh, we have uh, 
some wood ceiling elements in the space and some vinyl graphics as well to bring in a little visual interest in color. In the classroom wings, we've changed up the floor pattern a little bit so that it uh, draws attention to the exits. And we have a uh, wall tile. So we have the 12 by 24 inch porcelain wall tile in, uh, in throughout the spaces. Um, we have lockers. Uh, some of them are single tier, some of them are double tier. And um, I don't think too much else has changed in the spaces, but we do have the quartz tile throughout and in the classrooms themselves. The media center is carpet, so it's carpet tile. We are looking at um, specifying a product that is generally made for schools and educational spaces. So it's something that can hide where over time, if a tile um, has a stain that just cannot be removed, gum, something like that, it can be popped up and another tile can replace it and blend right in and not just look like, oh, that's a new tile that just got put in um, and is you know, living with the older tile. So these are products that are actually made for those particular um, purposes. And then we're also showing a little bit of a pattern in the space, which also helps um, in case a tile needs to be replaced over time. And then just some additional spaces. So we're looking at carpet in the admin areas. Um, the health suite would be the quartz tile. So we really want something um, resilient in that space. Uh, the, uh, the admin area will also have the cabinets. So we'll also have some of the maple um, veneer cabinets in those spaces neutral colors um, on the walls. The kitchen is the epoxy floor. Uh, the restrooms are also epoxy floor. The wet walls are 12 by 24 inch porcelain wall tile so that we have fewer grout joints. And then we have some ceramic tile for color accent and also so that we can um, bend around those curves. The general classrooms, uh, we're showing an accent paint on one of the walls, one of the teaching walls, and then um, to um, highlight the bump out in the classroom. And the floor in the classrooms would really just be a couple uh, accent, uh, neutral accents stripes, just again, to break up that big area so it's not just a big old white floor. And uh, I think that's it, let me see. Oh, this just shows the overall patterns of the quartz tile for each floor and it shows where the color is and where all the neutrals are. So it's primarily neutral flooring, again, with just color in the key areas. And these are the sample trays that were delivered. Um, and uh, again, hopefully you all got to take a moment to look at some of these samples and hold them and touch them and get familiar. Wendy, do you mind going back one slide for a second? Sure. And explain that uh, the, how, the, how you're using the color to identify what floor uh, for each floor so that makes it easier for the item, uh, wayfinding, et cetera. Exactly, exactly what you just said, Chin. So yes, yeah, so that each floor <laughs> is, <laughs> Each floor does have a color identifier in the classroom wing. So right now in this example, we are showing orange for the first floor, green for the second floor, and blue for the third floor. So the floors themselves are relatively neutral, but we do have those stripes that lead towards the exits and um, the color in the bump outs inside of the classroom. Um, and then just a few other areas outside of science right here would have color in them to help identify. Now we haven't gotten to the point of like figuring out where there might be an accent paint, for instance. And I know I did show the one example in the classroom, but that is again, something that we look at down the road and we can bring in color um, that way as well. Thanks, Wendy. Anybody have any questions or comments about colors and materials? Just a quick one. Yeah, um, 
sorry, I was the one who wasn't muted. Sorry about that part too. Um, how how high up is the tile coming in the in the hallways? It's at it's five feet from up. the ground up five feet. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Is there a question from Ben or? Uh, yeah, can you just uh, go back to one of the exterior pictures real quick, please? <clears throat> that particular yeah, that one? Would, no, it doesn't matter any of them. Okay. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it looks great. I, I think it, it looks awesome. And, and I'm very excited about, about the exterior of the building. Um, in terms of accuracy with like the picture we're looking at, and we've through VE cuts uh, reduced the number of trees and also the growth of the trees. So that's a big part of kind of like what the committee here is looking at and the feel good factor of what we're making decisions on. So are all the, and I'm not asking for anybody to do any extra work here as far as revising things, but are all the plantings that are shown in some of these renderings uh, accurate to what we have? And then, you know, what, what stage of growth are we looking at? Yeah, I, I think we're endeavoring to make it as accurate as possible, but I can't swear that, you know, if, if a VE item was cut trees by X percentage, that that's actually um, represented here, because I think you could go back at any time and add trees. In fact, a lot of projects will have, um, can you hear me, everybody? Yes. Yeah, I yes. can hear you. I think I was just I think seeing the chat kind of from- seems like Donald. Yeah, it seems yeah, like Don okay. lost it. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, the trees can be added back later if you have a healthy contingency at the end of the project or something like that. Um, and so the reality with the landscaping on these renderings, I think, is maybe a little, um, th there may be some components that are being VE'd and stuff like that. But the plants themselves, the types and stuff, I do think our graphics team spent a good chunk of time trying to match what is being called for in the landscape drawings. And then um, these trees, I would guess, um, you know, th these are probably trees that are, uh, you know, two to five years old, maybe. Um, yeah. This drawing. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not the most mature, but it's also not brand new. But I think that's part of, you know, when on day one, when the building opens, the building will. The trees will look dwarfed in terms of the size, <laughs> of the actual landscape, yeah, but yeah, it yeah, fills in pretty yeah, quick. So. Yeah, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just want yeah. to make sure that we all and everybody on the committee understands. And and you know, these pictures are out here now, and they're part of the public record, and they're going on the website. And so, you know, people pull up day one, and they're like, "Oh, well, it doesn't look like this picture." And it's like, "Yeah, it's you know, Chris gave us a really lucid explanation of why that may be." So, um, no worries, just checking in on that. Thanks. Yeah. Right. Nancy, did you have anything? I'll take that as a no. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? Hearing none, our next order of business is the three week look ahead from TAP A. So we actually, I don't think Matt put together three week look ahead in the sense of uh, just trying to get through the ER2 packages, but the next three weeks are going to be. Um, continuing to develop the project through uh, to the next stage of 90%. So it's just um, essentially, it's just putting all the, all the rest of the detail onto it and trying to get as much um, accuracy as we can so that the 90% set is correct. And then I think we also have a short term stop in there in between for the ER3, which um, Chen talked about um, previously. So um, so we've got a couple things to get ready for um, in that sense, but we, do, I, we we don't have a schedule or graphic to show for that at the moment. And and for the uh, and this is a general statement that uh, from here forward that there will be a lot more of the sort of uh, the technical detail that is required by the team to produce, and there will be also a fair amount of coordination with the. Uh, uh, the um, uh, fun, uh, Fontaine and as well as Compass to make sure that the ER uh, package are well coordinated so that they are correct as they go out uh, so that because we're 
we're, we're bidding the project in four pieces and we want to make sure that everything get captured and then we didn't miss something uh, in, in the package. So there will be a fair amount of that kind of behind the scene work uh, that will be uh, there. Well, there'll be a lot of that behind the scene work that will be happening. And as well as the uh, making sure that uh, every single um, light switches and, and uh, whatnot are called out in, in the project so that uh, we will reduce a number of uh, uh, errors and emission items in, in the project after the bid. Thanks, Chen. Does anybody have any final questions or comments? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion for Mr. Barrett, do we have a second? A second. Second for Mr. Jack Fisher, let me pull the committee. Mr. Frischa. Yes. Mr. Barrett. Yes. Ms. Hamilton. Yes. Ms. Galliban. Yes. Mr. Anderson. He's having trouble with the sound. Let's circle back to him. Mr. Hahn. Yes. Mr. Jeff Fisher. Mr. Jeff Fisher. Will be a sound issue as well. Uh, Mr. Jack Fisher. Yes. All right, Mr. Anderson, are you there? Yes, but I, I just got back in. I didn't hear any of the conversation, so I really can't vote. I'm sorry. Okay, we're just we're just doing a motion to adjourn. Oh, sure, I'll leave. All right, very good. Motion to uh, and let me circle back here. Have I missed Jeff Fisher? Are you there? We've lost Jeff Fisher, and I vote yes. We'll call it a vote. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Good night.